Some people, including myself, will pay extra for sunglasses that are polarized. Manufacturers claim that polarized sunglasses reduce glare and improve visibility, but does that mean that polarized sunglasses are always better? Well, no. Wavelengths of light go in all different directions, but when they're passed through a polarizer, they only go one direction. The rest are filtered out. What I have in my hand is a polarizing filter for photography. And just like big sunglasses wants you to think, the polarizing filter can help to cut glare. What this relies on is Brewster's angle. It's the angle at which unpolarized light will reflect and have all of the light that reflects be polarized parallel to the surface that reflected it. What this means is that unpolarized light, let's use sunlight as an example, will reflect off of a surface, let's say the road, and return with light that's polarized in a direction that's parallel to the surface that reflected it. So it's going to be horizontal because that's the direction of the road. Now that all the light coming off of the road and into your eyes is polarized horizontally, it's really easy to cut out that reflection and improve your visibility by polarizing the light vertically. You can see an example of this with these side-by-side -side photos of cars that I've taken. The photo on the right is polarized horizontally, making it go along with the light that's coming and reflecting off of the car. This makes the glare pretty intense, and you don't get to see what's actually doing the reflecting. What you see instead is the reflection. The photo on the left uses a vertical polarization, which goes in direct contrast with the light that's coming off of the car and thus eliminates all of those reflections. And this is why all polarized sunglasses are polarized vertically, because pretty much everything that's doing reflecting and would cause glare is horizontal. So if we polarize vertically, we can cut out any of those reflections that could cause us detriment. But in really precise applications, it's possible that you'd want a polarizer that's orientable in any direction. That's why circular polarizing filters for photography exist. The part that threads onto the camera is fixed, but the polarizing filter itself can rotate around. This makes it so that if there's something at a weird angle that's causing a reflection, you can use a polarizing filter and orient it in the direction that best suits you. But a photography polarizing filter is slightly different from the sunglasses that we see day to day. These filters have a linear polarizer and a circular polarizer which function similarly, but have a different end result. Linear polarization polarizes light in one single dimension. In the case of our sunglasses, it's vertical. Circular polarization, while we don't see it very often in nature, is very helpful because it doesn't interfere with the sensor and autofocusing of cameras. What the circular polarizer does is it polarizes light perpendicular to itself with a phase difference of 90 degrees. This means that the point on the wavelength with the greatest magnitude follows a circular pattern hence circular polarizer. The light that comes out of a circular polarizer is not linearly polarized. This means that if you put on your polarized sunglasses and hold the circular polarizer as if you were a camera, rotating it does not cause it to go dark. However, if you spin it around, you will see it go dark every 90 degrees. Now I only have one polarizing filter, but I can show you with sunglasses. So let me put the polarizing filter on the camera right now. What you've probably immediately noticed is that the image is significantly darker. That's because I've decided not to change the exposure to make it any brighter to bring this point home. Currently my shutter speed is set to 1 50th of a second, I'm at f2.2 and my ISO is set to 125. Because a polarizer cuts out exactly half of the light coming through it, if I set my ISO to 250, that should be exactly the same brightness as what you were seeing earlier. And now that I've dialed that up, it does look like it did when the polarizer was off. I'm gonna leave it like this for a moment to give you a little bit of demonstration with my glasses. The polarizer's currently set to be in conjunction with the vertical polarization of my glasses, so you might be able to see my eyes. You can see relatively clearly through the polarization of the glasses, but if I turn the glasses, you'll notice that they go completely dark. That's because the polarization direction is now perpendicular to that of my filter. Since the camera is only allowing vertical light to go in and the glasses at this point are only allowing horizontal light to get in, they are actually blocking all of the light. Now a super useful but sometimes inconvenient aspect of polarization is liquid crystal displays. They rely entirely on polarization to work, which means that when you're wearing polarized sunglasses, sometimes those LCDs go completely dark. My camera, for example, 
uses an LCD that's polarized vertically. For the most part, that's great when I'm shooting a horizontal photograph, but if I turn it 90 degrees, I can no longer see the LCD. So if I'm taking a portrait photograph, I need to actually take my sunglasses off. For demonstration purposes, my laptop also uses a LCD. While the polarizing filter is still on the camera, I can show you right now my beautiful background but if I turn it 90 degrees, it goes completely dark. Let me take the polarizing filter off now just so that my image can be a little higher quality. Now the image is twice as bright as it needs to be, so I need to dial down my exposure so that it is what it was earlier. So why does an LCD emit polarized light? Well, it's because of how it works. Liquid crystal is sandwiched by two polarizing filters in opposite directions. A light source is behind that pixel, but none of the light can get through because all of the light gets blocked by the opposite polarizers. When the liquid crystal in the middle becomes optically active, it changes the polarization of light and allows light to get through. But the light that gets through is still polarized. It's just hopefully polarized in a direction that allows you to wear polarized sunglasses while using it. In the case of both my camera and my laptop, this means that the polarized light that's coming through is vertical. Now, the thing that I mentioned about liquid crystal is its optical activity. That's a fancier way of saying that it changes the polarization of light. Now, there are lots of things that are optically active. For example, molecules that are chiral, meaning they don't have a superimposable mirror image. Take your hands, for example. If you take the mirror image of your right hand, you end up with a left hand. This means that your hands are chiral. Those chiral molecules do change the polarization, meaning they're optically active. Something else that's optically active is glass, but not always, only when it's under stress. In fact, both glass and plastic can be analyzed with what's called a polariscope, allowing you to see the internal stress of each. The polariscope works almost exactly like an LCD. You use a polarized light source, you can use an LCD to start with, and you put a polarizing filter on your camera or on your eyes, then you rotate one of those polarizations so that no light comes through. When things are placed between them that do change the polarization, you can clearly see it. What I did to set up my polariscope was I originally used my laptop's screen as a polarized light source, but I realized that my TV could do just as good a job and it's bigger and easier to manage. Then I took the polarizing filter and threw it on my camera. I oriented it so that there was no light coming from the TV, and then I just played around. You can see when I apply stress to this wine glass that the stem becomes optically active, letting some of that light through. You can also see that with this rigid plastic ruler, but there's also refringence of different colors. Now, could you tell me which of these glasses has water in it and which has sugar water? Let me give you a hint. Sugar is a chiral molecule. When I turn the polarizing filter in the proper direction, the water allows the polarized light to go straight through and doesn't change its orientation. But the sugar water does change the orientation. So without the polariscope, you can't necessarily tell the difference between water and sugar water. But with the polariscope, it becomes incredibly evident. A polariscope is thus very useful in materials analysis. You can tell the difference between glass that has been annealed and has not been annealed. Annealed glass has been heated up and allowed to settle, making there be very little internal stress. The refringence caused by certain glasses and plastics can cause you to see, just with normal polarized sunglasses on, those colors, for example, in the headlights of this Corvette. Despite the frustration of those LCDs and the refringence, most occupations would benefit from polarized sunglasses. For example, if you're fishing, the glare that comes off of the horizontal water gets eliminated by the vertical polarization of glasses. And although there's a debate about it, some snow sports people enjoy using polarized sunglasses because it allows the glare from the snow to be cut out as well. However, it does make differentiating between snow and ice more difficult because it eliminates contrast. And you would think that pilots would benefit immensely from polarized sunglasses because of the reflections from the tops of the clouds being eliminated by the vertical polarization. The LCDs used in cockpits make it very difficult for pilots to see with polarized sunglasses on. And also the polarized light from the clouds turns the entire sky into a polariscope. So the internal stress caused by the manufacturing process of the cockpit windscreen is actually clearly visible to pilots with polarized sunglasses on. As you can imagine, this would make flying a plane incredibly difficult, so pilots actually use non-polarized sunglasses, despite how they would cut the glare from those clouds. If you want a more in-depth explanation about that, go check out Captain Joe's video. So is polarization always helpful? Well, no, but it is incredibly useful to know about and is applicable in everyday situations. And are polarized sunglasses a scam? Well, obviously not, but for some people, they're not as helpful. I hope you learned something today, and as always, thank you for watching.